my name is Ricky and this video is about the time that Nat and I have spent traveling through South Australia in a camper van. If you don't know much about this state, then stick around because I'm going to show you the spectacular coastline as we travel from the east towards the Nullarbor in the west. But first, let's rewind. In the last video, we were crossing the border from Victoria to South Australia, close to Renmark along the Murray River. Forget your fears, forget the past. We'll pick things up when we get back. Let's get lost and see the world. Make a story we want to tell. Cause I know home is wherever my heart needs to be. Spent my day these nights before, not knowing what I'm searching for. It took a while for me to see. It turns out the two weeks we just had on the Murray wasn't enough, but that little free camp called Plush's Bend was a great way to cap off our time on the river. After a brief stop in Renmark, we made our way to Lake Bonnie, roughly 45 minutes west. This video covers our journey of over 2,000 kilometres across South Australia, and as you'll see, there's a huge amount of diversity here, and Lake Bonnie was no exception. We arrived to a deserted caravan park as the storm was blowing in, and the place looked pretty eerie. However, the rest of our time was picture perfect. The following day, we pulled up to a free camping spot beside the lake and enjoyed a quintessential day of camper van life. Make a story we want to tell Cause I know For long days on the road, having the van made life really easy. As you can see, the locations weren't always glamorous, but to pull some snags out of the fridge and stop for a roadside barbecue certainly beats the drive through. After lunch, we continued towards Port McDonnell, roughly five to six hours away in the southeastern corner of the state. The route we chose gave us loads of different landscapes, transitioning from endless plains, some with livestock, to timber plantations, and then the wine region of Coonawarra. We overnighted in the little town of Panola and then made our way to Mount Gambia, a relatively big city of 27,000 people. It's a couple of must-visit spots here. The first is Blue Lake, a volcanic crater aptly named for its vivid blue colour. The other is Umferston Sinkhole, a collapsed limestone cave turned sunken garden. It's free to enter and it's teeming with life. It was only another 20 minutes down the road, but arriving in Port McDonnell felt a world away from Mount Gambia. After a night in the local caravan park, we spent some time exploring the coastline along the Southern Ocean Drive. This rugged area is home to loads of shipwrecks and you can learn about them while taking in this spectacular scenery.
Our next stop was just a short drive away in Kanunda National Park. National parks in South Australia cost $16.50 per night, and in our view, they're worth every cent. You can't actually see it in the footage here, but our time was slightly ruined by a huge number of March flies. They were pretty annoying during the day, but luckily they were tucked up in bed as we watched the sun go down and spotted sea lions. That was one awesome sunset, and there's no playing with colours there, that's exactly how it looked for us. The next stop was the laid back seaside town of Beachport. It was only 20 minutes away, so we took a slight detour along Bowman Scenic Drive and checked out the nearby beaches, which are well worth a visit. Beachport was an excellent spot to chill out, enjoy some local seafood and make the most of the town. We really liked this place and found one of our favourite caravan parks here too. Although we prefer being in nature, the van needs to be charged every couple of days. Costs for these parks are anywhere from $20 to $60 a night. $35 for a spot here was pretty good value. After a couple of days, we drove a further half hour to the town of Robe and just look at the colour of that water. Our next destination was the wine region of McLaren Vale, but we had a good four hours behind the wheel to get there. Along the way, we passed some of South Australia's many salt lakes, something we'd continue to see plenty of as we headed west. McLaren Vale is actually home to some of the world's oldest vineyards, and I had to take Nat to see my favourite, the Cube at Darrenburg. The wine here is delicious, but what sets it apart is how quirky the place is. From the building itself, to the little cinema looping a video that can best be described as trippy, to the many pieces of art dotted throughout, there's nothing quite like it. To be honest, good wine is slightly wasted on us, so we skipped out on any more wineries and spent the following days exploring the coastline as we made our way towards Adelaide. First up, one of the best beaches in the country, Maslin Beach.
We thought our day was done when those clouds approached. They disappeared as quickly as they came, leaving us with some more time to enjoy the beach before scoffing down a pizza in a matter of minutes while the sun went down. We do loads of walking when we travel, most of the time with no idea where we're going and no real plan. But it paid off here as we explored the coastline from Hallett Cove to Port Nualunga, discovering Sugarloaf Circuit along the way, which is awesome. You can read about the geology of this place and how it began to form when the ice melted here 280 million years ago. It's a really cool spot and only a train ride from Adelaide. We spent a couple of months in Adelaide last year and with so much ground to cover, it was only a quick stopover. We charged the van overnight, stocked up on supplies and started heading towards the Air Peninsula. The sun was setting as we arrived at our overnight stop, a free camp in Chinaman's Creek. We're always happiest when we're in places like this, but because we work as we travel, we need a lot of power. The camper van has a solar panel on the roof, which keeps the lights and fridge going, but to help us stay off the grid longer, we invested in a little solar panel and a Jackery battery box. When the sun is shining, this little kit covers all of our electronic power needs for the day, and we can stay in places like this for longer. We resumed our journey with the Flinders Rangers providing a dramatic backdrop. I mean really, how can you not love this country? Later that day, we reached the Air Peninsula, making a few stops along the way to Port Lincoln. We spent the morning there before heading across to Coffin Bay, home of some of Australia's best oysters and our spot for the weekend, Coffin Bay National Park. Our first day here was spent taking the van across the park to check out some of the isolated beaches. We were loving it here and spent day two on foot heading out from our campsite in Yangi Bay to hike some sand dunes. <laughs> Along with seafood and wine, South Australia is famous for wildlife and luckily Coffin Bay delivered on that front with multiple visitors coming up to say g'day.
pretty happy when that emu chick came right up to the GoPro. We didn't think much could beat Coffin Bay, but the best was yet to come. We continued north along the Seafood Explorer's Way, stopping at Greenlee Beach and taking a stroll to the Greenlee Beach Rock Pools. Continuing towards the Nullarbor, we passed more and more salt lakes and the landscape became increasingly desolate. This quickly changed as we made a slight detour to check out Talia Caves. South Australia had given us an incredible three and a half weeks. We had one more thing to do before this video ends in Sejuna, and that was to go swimming with the sea lions. We spent the morning with Baird Bay Ocean Eco Experience, who gave us over three hours in the water swimming with these playful creatures. It's one of the best things I've ever done, and we caught some of it with the GoPro. I hope you've enjoyed getting a look at South Australia. We're about to cross the Nullarbor and head towards Perth. Can't wait for that. We've had a great three and a half weeks here, but it's time to move on. The adventure continues 
and I hope you'll join for the next video very soon. Thanks for watching.